Hello, my name is Diana Dirkby, and I live with paranoid schizophrenia. You are listening to my podcast, Schizophrenia As I Live It. Today I wanted to talk about stress and how to manage it. In my case, and this is true for many people who live with schizophrenia, stress is a trigger for your symptoms getting worse. Therefore, I have to be very careful how I manage stress. I had such a conflict just the other day. Uh, I had slept badly and through no fault of my own or through no fault of anybody really, uh, there were a number of stresses that had built up um, over about a week or so. And so I had a day when my stress was really pronounced. So one of the things you have to recognize is how do you feel when you are beginning to get stressed over what is healthy? In my case, my tongue goes numb and my lips go numb and then I don't feel them at all as the stress gets worse. So this is a very uh, physical and easy to observe and detect symptom of stress. So the other day I was also fatigued, so um, not being able to deal with uh, uh, a night where I got maybe seven hours sleep but not eight and a half, which is what I need, added to the stress. Now, in my case, I work completely from home and uh, my husband also. So I'm in the privileged position of being able to mold my behavior at home around uh, stress when it occurs. Now, many of you, uh, I, I realize, are, are not in that position. You have jobs, uh, you have a family, and it simply may be very, very difficult to switch off. Okay. Now, in my case, I have learned that the best thing to do when I feel so stressed that I begin to feel the paranoia and other symptoms of schizophrenia that I, I simply have to stop. So I have to do whatever I do uh, that day to be zero demanding on me and to be something that I enjoy doing. So the other day when I had my stressful day, I binge-watched uh, movies because I love movies and it doesn't involve uh, me doing anything but flicking a switch and watching the movie. And my husband, who by now knows me very well, uh, was kind enough to uh, be in the same room as me watching the same movies. However, I, I wasn't always in this position. Uh, I mean, I worked for a long time um, in mathematical research uh, which involved showing up, for example, to teach or for a seminar or w whether it's a seminar I was giving or a seminar I was expected to listen to. And stopping altogether simply wasn't an option. So what I learned to do on these stressful days was to take a back seat if I was to give a talk, say, if I had to give a seminar, obviously I was to the forefront and you, know, you can't take a back seat if you're giving a seminar, but what you can do is make sure that you're very prepared and um, you have notes and you have uh, probably um, slides that you can show uh, with a projector or from your laptop that meant that everything was prepared in advance, so all I had to really do was to read what I had prepared. 
if I was in the audience of a seminar and I was going through a period of bad stress, then I, I, I learned just to not participate in the back and forth during the seminar and, and questions after the seminar, but simply to let other people do that. Now, the days uh, that I was teaching a class, it was similar to when I was giving a seminar. I always made sure that I was very prepared so that if I was having a stressful day, I could get away with just giving the the class by reading the well-prepared notes that I had. So again, uh, uh, um, this situation is not possible for many of you, and uh, I know that you have to get through days where you are very stressed and you still have to perform at work and you still have to perform for your family. Now, if you have some someone at work who is sympathetic, then I would advise you to simply tell them that you're having a bad day and that you'll do your best at your job, but you really um, you really need to manage the stress you're having. You don't need to men- mention mental illness, but you could say that you're very stressed and you need to manage it today. And uh, uh, could you bear that in mind, please? With your family, you can be a little bit more open. So presumably um, your family, the family that you're living with, uh, knows that you live with schizophrenia, that it's a severe mental illness, and that it can be triggered by stress. So you have to find some way to communicate with them and say, this is a stress day. I need to be as low-key as possible. I need to rest as much as possible. I really need um, you guys as my family to step up and support me today. Or if the stressful period lasts for longer than one day, then then of course you'll, you'll say, you know, it's going to be a few days that uh, I'm not going to be uh, at my best. So if it's at all possible and you feel that the symptoms of schizophrenia are kind of coming in because of some stressful events or maybe some some shock that you've received, research whether it's possible actually to take a sick day or two from work so that you can stay at home and just deal with what you're going through. Now, that's going to depend on your job and it's going to depend on your boss. Uh, And I know that that is possible in the job I had as a researcher in mathematics and as a university professor, but I know it's not possible for everybody. Now, I am very goal-oriented, which often works against healthy behavior for my schizophrenia because I I have always in my mind things that I must do, things that I want to do, and I get depressed if I don't achieve those goals. Very goal-oriented. I think I inherited that from my father who who was the same, you know, very goal-oriented. And if he didn't get done uh, what he had planned to do in any one day, he stressed himself. So I'm like that. Now, he didn't live with a mental illness, but I do, so I cannot afford to indulge such behavior. So what I do when there are goals coming up is I prioritize. So, you know, I I make a list, and I think I've spoken about this before, of what is the most urgent, then what is the second most urgent, the third most urgent, and so on. So I don't take on everything all at once, but I I simply work through the tasks that I have to do based on when the deadline is. So at the moment, uh, uh, it's the end of March and I haven't finished my taxes, so uh, I need a couple couple more weeks before the deadline for taxes, and so that's – kind of my number one priority is to get my taxes done. 
I am working with the proofs of my second book and that's priority number two. And the good thing about that also is that it's an activity I enjoy. So it's kind of neutral ground. It's not stressful, but yet it's something that I ideally want to advance because I need to read the proofs and get all the corrections in uh, in order for the project to keep going. And then, of course, there's what my spouse needs. Now, I don't want you to think that I put my spouse as the third most important thing in my day. He's actually the first most important thing in my day, but he's very, very understanding, so he'll take the third most important thing in my day if he realizes I'm under stress and I need support. So whether you're living with your family or you're living with uh, someone that you love, um, you know, a spouse or uh, you know, a child or a parent or whatever, you simply must have the discussion about what triggers a relapse of your mental illness, so in my case schizophrenia, and what you need to do if things are happening too much at once or you're getting stressed or whatever it is that triggers uh, your mental illness. You need to have an honest conversation with the people you are living with so that they can help you. And it took me a long time to have that conversation with my spouse. I mean, I wanted him to think of me as someone who could do anything and uh, was always cheerful and so on and so forth. But that only got me a certain distance. And after he'd witnessed uh, my schizophrenia symptoms, he knew that I needed to tell him a lot more and that we needed to work on prioritizing my mental health. So, you know, whether it's you want to make money or, or, or you want to absolutely get in touch with everybody you know on social media or, or whatever it is that kind of is a good day for you, but you're under stress and you feel your mental illness creeping in, just try to cut out with what isn't necessary. So, you know, I have periods where I don't even go on social media if I feel that uh, I'm stressed and I'm not going to be able to give to social media the image of myself that I want out there. And also I'm going to be stressed because it's one thing I'm piling on top of other things I need to do. So you don't need to be on your uh, smartphone and you don't need to be at your computer 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, which I know, uh, you know, uh, is hard for some people because our day-to-day -day life has become more and more uh, a question of what you see on a screen. And phones and laptops and worrying about social media, worrying about the news, these are all things that take up a tremendous amount of energy and they're probably the first thing that you can put to one side if you're under stress. You don't need to be in touch with every single friend you have on social media every day. Now, when I was growing up, it was before uh, uh, even email, and um, you know, I would go to school. I had a, a handful of best friends, and then uh, I would see them at the end of school, and then I wouldn't see them until the morning after, and we'd catch up on uh, what had happened overnight. There, there really isn't a necessity to be updated minute by minute as to what people are doing. Same with the news, same with the stock market, same with whatever it is that you've got going on. Now, you know, I've been quite open about the fact that I'm in a rather privileged position when it comes to managing stress. But even so, I have often failed to manage it and got into a lot of trouble with my schizophrenia for that reason. However, I recognize that it may be more difficult for some of you uh, out there to leave things uh, to one side and just manage how you feel. But try to be creative 
try to have um, a strategy that you will adopt if you're in a situation which is bad for your mental health. And don't be afraid to share about it. I, I mean, there's a lot of stigma against mental illness, but I think people, even when they don't really understand what mental illness is, if you give them something straightforward that they can do to help you feel better, if they're a nice person, they'll probably want to do that. If they like you, they'll probably want to do that, even if they don't understand fully what you're going through. So anyway, in my case, I, I managed uh, this day or two of stress. Uh, some of the events causing the stress are still going on. So I am being incredibly easy on myself at the moment. Uh, some of the deadlines have been pushed to later. Uh, I've made lists of what I should do first, second, third, fourth, and so on so that I'm not trying to achieve all the goals all at once. And I'm on the lookout for stress and coping with it with the techniques I briefly described to you, uh, which are deeply personal. So for those of you who are listening to this, You've got to deal with your personal situation when it comes to stress and when it comes to whatever makes your mental illness worse. But there, there, there are people out there who will help you. I mean, the, the mental health advocacy groups uh, have uh, support groups that meet weekly, uh, and you can go to those and get a, a lot of support. Um, you can, If you're on social media, you can... Uh, Look for people talking about mental illness and stress rather than talking about subjects that may stress you. For example, politics or the economy or whatever it is that gets your blood boiling. Just try to make a nice environment for yourself. On the way to somewhere stronger. When you're stronger, when, when, when you know, you've managed with the stress, you've made some progress with your goals and so on and so forth, you can take on some of the things that you may be passionate about, like politics and the economy and civil rights. They will wait for you and you can come back to them when you're feeling stronger. So here I am, and I've had uh, some stressful days since I last spoke to you, but I, I, I've I've come through them. And I've done less than I had envisaged doing in, in the last week or so, but uh, my schizophrenia is doing well and I'm managing it well, so I consider it's worth it. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, as I always say, please consider looking at my book, The Overlife, A Tale of Schizophrenia. Um, you can find it on Amazon if you search by my pen name, Diana Dirkby. And you can find information about it on my website, overliveschizophrenia.com. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you would uh, tune in next time. Have a great day. Have a happy day. And just give, give a few people you love a hug. That will really help. Okay. Bye-bye for now.